Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to take a look at genetic drift. Now, up to this point, what we've been talking about in class has been natural selection. So we've been looking at how living things could change over time, especially as a, a species, a group, uh, or population, changing over time. And we focus on natural selection, where individuals had to have the right traits to survive in their environment. And when environments changed, individuals with the right traits were the ones that survived, reproduced, while individuals with the not so great traits died off, and um, that caused an overall change in the species over time. Okay. Um, now in uh, this video we're going to take a look at how genetic drift can cause change. So this is another thing. This is not natural selection. This is something different from natural selection. Alright, so here's the definition. So genetic drift is a, basically a way of changing the population where a random event um, can cause change. Okay. So a lot of times when we talk about a random event and we're talking about nature here, um, we're talking about natural disasters. So a random event happens and it's going to cause change in a population. And when this random event happens, um, it's going to kill individuals regardless of their traits. So in genetic drift, tra traits do not matter. Okay? Now the, the environment of course is still uh, a factor because natural disasters are part of environments, um, but traits do not matter in this case. It basically comes down to almost luck. Uh, if you're in the right place, you survive. Um, if you're in the wrong place, you die. Um, and what that means is, as far as um, change goes, if you're in the right place and you survive, you pass on your genes. If you're in the wrong place and you die, you can no longer pass on your genes. Okay? So here's the definition of genetic drift versus natural selection, where in natural selection, what we've learned about the last four days in class, um, in natural selection, you have a permanent or prolonged, and we have to say permanent, quotation marks here, uh, change in the environment, prolonged change in the environment, and individuals with the right traits will survive while others die off. Now, some examples of genetic drift. So these are uh, these are really simplified, um, but uh, they're they're good visual examples of genetic drift. So let's say we have this population of monkeys. They're all the same species, but if you look at them, you can see that there's variation among them. They're not exactly the same. So looking at the species of monkeys here, they're living happily on the um, edge of a of a uh, jungle uh, on a uh, beach. Well, a natural disaster happens. In this case, a tsunami. Tsunami comes through and it's going to wipe out individuals regardless of their trait. Um, the ones that get swept up in the tsunami were in the wrong place at the wrong time, while the ones that survive just happen to be in the right place. Okay? Well, now if this is all that's left and they start to reproduce, um, you're going to see monkeys that look like them. So we have changed the overall look of this population from how it was um, before the natural disaster happened. So this is an example of genetic drift. There were many gene alleles that were wiped out when um, the unlucky individuals got carried away, while the ones that were left, they're able to pass on their genes. Right? Another example here, um, so we have these frogs. Um, and let's say in this case a forest fire comes through and they wipe out these individuals that were just ha just happened to be in the wrong place. These guys were in the right place, they survive. And if you look, their alleles, so here we're actually looking at their genes, we can actually see them inside them, that represent them. The little A's represent uh, purple while the big A's represented green. These guys, all they can pass on is instructions for purple. Um, so as this species continues to reproduce, um, all you're going to see is purple frogs. All right, uh, last example here with genetic drift, you have beetles. Um, so look at all the different variations of these beetles here. They are all the same species. And let's say all the individual beetles outside of this circle here, um, they're in their trees at home when a forest fire comes through. These individuals just so happen to be out looking for food. So forest fire comes through. Now all that's left are these um, beetles and they can only pass on their genes that they contain. Okay? We can see, oops, my bad. Um, we can see that um, the brown got wiped out, uh, this got wiped out. So that's definitely going to change the population because now only certain genes can be passed on. All right. So uh, what you're going to do is uh, you are going to write a T-chart um, 
and compare natural selection to genetic drift. What I'd like you to do first is similarities. How are natural selection and genetic drift similar? Uh, for example, I could get you started here. Um, let's say they both cause change. So you could put causes change, causes change. Um, then I want you to come up with a few more similarities between them. Under your similarities, I'd like you to come up with differences. So if you find one thing for natural selection, let's say you might say natural selection takes time or a long time, while genetic drift can cause change very fast, um, and you're going to compare them side by side like that. All right, and then here's just a refresher of um, that, that definition of what genetic drift is versus natural selection, and you can use that to help you uh, fill in your T-chart. 